Ever wondered what really happens when a load is applied to the middle of a right column in a simply supported frame? In this session, I will show you step by step how to analyze this frame using three golden rules. You will learn how to draw accurately shear force diagram, bending moment diagrams, and deflected shapes so you can tackle these problems with precision like a professional. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer in structural engineering and design at University of East London. On this channel, we explore structural engineering. What happens if a load is applied at the middle of right column in this simply supported frame? Let us assess the options for solving the question i will be applying these three golden rules the first rule is rigid joints will remain at 90 degree for example there is a rigid joint over here when you are applying load at the tip the 90 degree angle which is here it does not change at all it will remain 90 if the joint is rigid the second rule is that fixed support will have zero rotation. This is a fixed support. Theta over here is going to be zero. So slope or rotation at a fixed support will always be zero. Thirdly, internal pin does not take any moment at all. So here we have internal pin. Moment is always going to be zero at internal pin. A load is applied over here. So when load is applied towards right, the roller should move towards right. So this is the reason this option is incorrect. Option D is incorrect because when you apply loading towards right, uh, this should create tension on the outside. Here tension is being created inside and also at a pin support, you cannot have theta. So theta cannot be zero. So that's the reason option D is incorrect as well. Now this will leave me with option B and C. So when you apply loading over here, then this is moving the column towards right, but it should move the beam up. It should move it in a way so that there is tension over here. I don't see a reason for sagging in the beam. Sagging in the beam cannot happen because no vertical load is applied. It means that this option is wrong. The correct option is option B because when we apply loading towards right, tension should be outside. The column with roller, it should not bend. And there should be a single curvature tension outside in the beam. So these are the sign conventions which I will be using. Anti-clockwise shear forces are positive. Tension, it means that arrows pointing away from the element will be positive. And clockwise moments from left are positive from right anti-clockwise moments are positive and for bending moment diagram sagging moments are drawn inside the frame and hogging moments or negative moments or anti-clockwise moments are drawn outside the frame it reverses the case for shear force diagram when we will draw the negative forces inside and positive forces outside. Remember that anti-clockwise shear forces are positive. Anti-clockwise shear force is like this. It will generate anti-clockwise moment and it has to be drawn outside the frame. Let's now draw the deflected shape. Once we have this deflected shape, it is trying to move the frame in upward direction so that's the reason the reaction here should be downwards and over here reaction should be upwards because we don't have any horizontal reaction at roller support we have horizontal load applied so horizontal load applied is rightwards so reaction is going to be leftwards so once we have got direction of reactions and let's define the tension side as well here we have tension outside tension outside single curvature here there is no tension so nothing is happening over here 
So when we have tension outside, we will draw that tension outside, negative for bending moment diagram. So positive is drawn inside, negative is drawn outside. And for joint compatibility, we will have moment over here, but there's no change in moment between this point and at the end. And here we will have triangular distribution of moment. And this is how we draw the bending moment diagram and then shear force diagram. For shear force diagram, we have this direction of reactions. So firstly, the leftward reaction is creating a clockwise moment. Positive is drawn outside, negative is drawn inside. Anti-clockwise shear forces are positive and clockwise shear forces are negative. This is creating clockwise. So that's why I will have negative shear force here. The vertical forces, they are creating anti-clockwise moment. So anti-clockwise moment is positive. So that's why I will draw anti-clockwise moment here. Not moment, anti-clockwise shear forces are positive. This is the shear force diagram. So correct option is option B. Finally, we have to draw the deflected shape for this frame with internal pin. Let's see which options are correct. I've taken this question from ISRACT certificate in structural behavior. Option D is incorrect because it shows zero rotation at right support. First of all, let's assess the option. When you apply loading, it will move towards the weaker side. So weaker side in this case is towards left. So it should move left because it's not moving left. This option is incorrect. Here, rigid joints are there when we are applying loading. Sway should happen. Sway is not happening. So that's why this option is wrong as well. In option C, it is moving towards right. It should not move towards right. It should move towards left because left is a weaker side. That's the reason this option is wrong as well. Option D seems to be correct because we have tension over here. It is moving towards left. That's how it should behave. Tension top, tension top, and then tension is outside. The only thing here is that it is attached at the bottom it looks like it is a fixed support it is not a fixed support it's a pin support so when you have a pin support it should deflect like there should be theta angle so that's the reason this option should be correct but with this modification and it's wrong in the practice question of abstract certificate in structural behavior so option a is wrong b is wrong because frame is not swaying frame, frame should 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 sway towards left. I'm mixing up my words. <laughs> so this option C is incorrect. It is moving towards right. And the correct option now here, you can see there is theta over here. Theta has got some value and the frame is swaying towards left. So this option is the correct option. Option D is the right answer. Let's now draw the deflected shape. So firstly, we will draw the direction of reactions upwards, upwards as frame is swaying towards left. So to bring it back down, the direction of reaction here should be at left support should be rightwards and at right support, it should be towards left. And let's determine tension. We should have tension over here, tension here, tension here, and tension outside. Let's first of all draw tension outside over here, positive inside and negative outside. For joint compatibility, this should go out as well. Negative, negative. And again, we have tension outside from here. We have tension outside as well for left column and it's a single curvature. Once we have drawn this, then we should be able to draw shear force diagram fairly easily. Let's draw the shear force diagram. Direction of reactions. Remember that negative is drawn inside and positive is drawn outside for shear force. And this reaction at right support, it is causing a clockwise shear. So clockwise is to be drawn inside. And this vertical force on right support reaction and 
this downward force, it is causing anti-clockwise, so anti-clockwise is drawn upwards. And this force, downward force and left reaction, it is causing clockwise, so clockwise is drawn on the negative side. And finally, the rightward reaction, it is causing anti-clockwise, so anti-clockwise is positive, so positive is drawn outside the frame. This is how we draw the shear force diagram and bending in affected shape. The correct option is option D. You can now watch the entire video series on iStructy Certificate in Structural Behavior by scanning this barcode or going to this URL. It's very useful playlist to watch. And if you want to clarify your basic concepts, watch this series now. You can download the lecture slides by scanning this barcode or going to this URL. Thanks for watching this lecture today and I will see you in my next lecture. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you think it added value to your knowledge and understanding.